Hey, this is OXDF. CTFs give you not only the thrill of hacking into something and getting the flag, but they also give you an opportunity. Um, this is an opportunity, I've, I think I coined this term beyond root. Um, you know, you've got root on this box. Go look at the technology and understand how it works. Uh, in CTFs and places like Hack the Box, you're going to get exposed to so many different uh, technologies and uh, different types of things that you might run into in the real world. Um, this is your opportunity. You know, you could build all these things in their own home lab and stand them up, and that's probably a better experience, but that takes a lot of time. Um, here, you, you've already got a root shell on a box running some technology. Go understand it. So uh, this video is going to take place after I've already rooted Sandworm from Hack the Box. Um, I've got a full blog showing how I rooted it and all of that. Um, there'll be a link in the description down here. Um, but in this video, we're going to look at the web application. We're going to see how it runs as a service. We're going to see how it works as a Flask application and how it does GPG things. Um, we're going to understand the vulnerability, and we're going to even like jump over to a little toy application and dig into how Python Flask uh, server-side template injection, SSTI, works. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, so we'll start with a quick refresher on the web app itself. So if you're watching this video and you didn't solve the box, you can at least have an idea of what we're doing. Um, we have a, a web page for the secret spy agency here. Um, there's, there's a couple pages, it's all just text. The important part here is this contact page where you can upload a PGP encrypted uh, message. And they say you don't know how to use PGP, or I guess you kind of have to go anyway because this is where you get their key. Um, they have a guide where you can download their public key right here. This is their PGP key. Um, and they have some toy applications where you can you know, encrypt text with their PGP key and they will decrypt it for you. Um, you can give them your public key and they will give you a message that you can then decrypt and read. Um, you can create a message and sign it with your private key and give it to them with your public key and they will verify it for you. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, again, in the blog post, I go through examples of setting up GPG and how all this works. We're gonna assume that's not the scope of this video. Um, but I am going to show you just the vulnerability. Let me grab over here. I've got um, a signed message here. I can put in there. And I've got my public key that I used to sign it right here. And if we hit verify signature, um, the name, the username on the public key here is um, a server side template injection. And so you can see here, we are actually getting code execution as uh, running the ID command right there. And uh, so we've exploited this box, and this is how you get a foothold on the box. Um, so with that in mind, let's jump over and check out my root shell. Um, the first thing to say is to look at how this gets started. Uh, so we can go to the Etsy, systemd, system directory, and there is a uh, fire jail flask service. Um, in this, in this box, when you exploit this and get execution, if you get a shell through that, you'll see that you're actually running in a fire jail, j fire jail, jail, um, like a restricted environment. And you can see here that starts with, um, it runs fire jail with this given profile. And then within that profile, it's gonna run flask run. It's gonna do that from the var www HTML SSA directory. And it's gonna have an environment variable of flap, flask app SSA. Um, now this is all, uh, this all matters. This just this shows us how it starts. Uh, so let's see. We can jump out of here and go to that directory. So here we are. Yes, I say. Now, when I run Flask Run, what's going to actually happen is um, by default, it's going to look for files called um, app.py. I think there might be another one. You can try to find an app object in it. Oh, ws wsgi.py. Um, and it's going to try to find that. Um, now, there is no app.py WSGI in the current directory, and that's why we had to set that environment variable. Um, and when we set that environment variable, it says, um, you know, to the Flask app is now SSA. It's saying that the uh, to look for a SSA.py or an SSA module. Module is just a directory with a init that uh, dunder init init. So we can go into here. Oops. We can see this is a dunder init file right here. Dunder in Python is just like the cool word for like underscore, underscore, something, underscore, underscore. So dunder, double underscore, maybe. Um, so it's going to try to load from this file because this is the, the core of the module, the dunder init. Um, and the other thing, actually, that I didn't even know until doing some research for this video. Um, it also, in addition to looking for an app object, um, and, uh, you know, by flat, to create a Flask uh, application, you, you create an app object. 
And in addition to looking for that, I can also look for an app factory. Um, and what an app factory is, is a function called create app, or I think it also works as make app that returns the object app. And so you can see um, the reason you'd want to do this, right, is uh, the, in Flask, and we'll go into this in a little bit, you create an app object just like this right here, app equals flask.name, and then you use that to decorate different routes. So you do at app dot route and you define a route and you put it over that over a function. And that means that when someone hits that endpoint, that's the function that gets called. And this gets complicated because in your main folder file, you know, your app.py, you're going to define your app. And then if you do it all in one file, then that's fine. Like you can just decorate everything with that app. But as soon as you start like wanting to have a little bit of organization, maybe you want to have a complicated website with lots of different routes, lots of different path, sub paths, et cetera. Uh, you start wanting to have different files holding those routes, and now you need to import the app from the main. But the main is also importing those routes, and you get a circular thing, and it gets very confusing. So this, is, in this case, this that's why we do things like create this factory. Um, it's also why you might use a technology called Blueprints, um, and we'll see that in a minute. Um, anyway, let, let's actually take a look at the source now. I guess we can walk through this. So we are creating our, our, our Flask run is going to call create app and get the app. App is going to configure itself. We got the SQL uh, connection string here. Um, we're going to init, init the DB, which is run through CB SQL Alchemy. Um, we're actually going to import from dot app. So that's the app.py in the same directory, um, main, and we're going to register those routes. Um, and then we're going to do some login stuff. So nothing super interesting here. Um, if we open up main, oops, app.py, abort. Uh, no, let's, uh, let's, uh, recover. Cool. I don't know what happened there, but let's, let's go for it. Um, you can see here, we are using this blueprint thing to create a main object, which then we use to decorate all of our routes here. It's a slightly more complicated way than just doing the app. Um, but again, we couldn't have the app in this one because it was created and we have circular imports. Um, and so also interesting here is we have this genu G N U G P G gpg library, which is actually just a Python module that maps the various gpg functions into Python. And that's actually pretty cool. You can see here, we're actually loading up the key ring uh, straight out of the Atlas home directory. And then uh, later we'll see this so right down here. For example, we have gpg decrypt. Uh, we have to give it the passphrase and, uh, you know, so we can actually just call gpg functions right within our Python module. So that's pretty cool. Um, here is an example of a Flask route. So if we visit the main, the, the root of the web server, it's going to map to this home function. It's going to return a render template of template.html with the name home. So that's going to go into the templates directory. It's going to find template.html. Um, and it's going to have the ability to use the name, the, the variable name and set it to this. And so you can have the same uh, template, but maybe call it different ways. Um, in this case, probably name is actually used in like some sort of base template that all the other templates go off of that maybe provides this menu bar at the top here. Um, and that's how you can tell which one of these is uh, highlighted. Um, we'll skip down here. Contact is a little bit more interesting. So you can see these other ones just take get request by default. Contact is going to take get and post. And then we can check, you know, if the request method is get, we're just going to return a static page. Um, but otherwise, we're going to read out of the form encrypted text. We're going to uh, call a validate function. If it fails, we're going to return uh, where if it succeeds, we're going to do a GPG decrypt. Um, if there's no data, you know, we can, again, use this here to see, uh, you know, some basic logic here and eventually we return a template. Um, we have a save function here, save the tip to a file system. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, I think, I guess, specifically at this point, I'm going to jump down. Let's see, we're going to go try to look at uh, the routes that involve the exploit itself. So I wish, when I first started looking at this, I thought it was, I thought it was uh, this going to be guide verify, and uh, you can see here where we eventually pass down to, but it's all these render templates still. Um, something went wrong. Here's the signature is valid. Um, print out the stuff. And I thought, oh, here this must be it right here. Um, but it's weird because that's still being passed into render template, and render template um, in general is safe. Um, and we'll, we're going to do a little toy function at the end to show that. Um, but it actually, if we scroll down a little bit more. What actually happens when we submit to, um, I don't know if I have burp up at the moment, but if we, uh, we will just, we'll do this the other way. Um, oh, we'll do net, uh, network. We come here and we come down here and we, whoa, 
I get the citation. I hit verify signature, and you can see that it goes to process uh, is what gets passed to. So this this right here is the vulnerable uh, function, and you can see we read the sign in public sign message in public key. They have to both exist, um, and then we let's see. Interesting. If they don't exist, I guess we still return message, but message isn't set. That might cause an error. Anyway, uh, we are going to import the key into G with GPG. We're going to make sure that worked. We're going to verify it, and then we're either going to say the signature is valid and here's the results, or we're going to say make sure it's properly formatted. But then we pass the results to return template string. And return template string is dangerous because if we return template string says here's a string, treat it as a template. And if we're treating it as a template, that means that there's variables in there. Um, those get treated as code and can get so now if I can control what gets put into this verified standard error, then I can control what's getting passed into this template uh, rendering engine code, and that's code execution. So um, that's basically all I want to show about the app. Let's take a quick look. Um, make let's make our own. So we'll open up a new window here, and uh, we'll start with just like a super simple uh, app.py from Flask import Flask. Now, uh, the first thing we're going to do is just like we saw before, we'll create a, a, a uh, app. And now we can use app.route on flash. We'll call this uh, def index. And we can say return hello world. Super simple. We'll come down here and we will do flask run. And I'm going to do dash dash debug. And that just means when I save the um, Code above it will restart itself. Otherwise, I have to do a lot of killing and restarting. Uh, we don't need the developer tools anymore. We can run this. So let's go to 127.001.5000. And we get hello world. We hit we hit it. You can see down here we also see that. So now let's make it a little bit more interesting. Um, we'll do app.route. You can have, you can stack these decorators. So if you do like this. And now we can pass in name equals none. So what this is going to do, let's do something like if name return, make an f string, hello name. And now we save this. You can see this restarts down here, so we don't have to change anything. If we restart, we still have hello world, but now if we do uh, OXDF, we get, we get hello OXDF. So you can see. Um, We've now, by putting it in uh, angle brackets like that, we've defined a variable. So we can now, if it's none, like we hit it from this version, uh, the default version is none. But otherwise, um, we'll put whatever we have after that first slash into name, and then we can check it and use it. Um, so now we want to use we, we want to use a template, right? So instead, what we're going to do, we'll delete all this. Uh, whoops. Okay, and we're going to need from Flask, we're going to need render template. So now we'll be return render template. We'll call our template index.html and we'll say name equals name. And that's going to fail at first if we try to hit. If we try to hit this right now, it's going to fail because it can't hit the template. Uh, template not found. So if we make dirt templates and we do a vim index.html, full screen that. And we can do some stuff like we could put full HTML in here and make this a really nice page. Um, we're just going to do a really simple thing. We're going to say if name and when you put uh curly bracket followed by percent sign that's like a way of saying do some code stuff so in this case like an if statement and now we can say hello and we'll say and when you do double brackets like that that means treat it as a variable so we're gonna do hello name and then we come down here we can say else and we say hello world and then we just need to do an and if I think that should work. We'll give it a try. All right. Um, oh, I restarted it anyway. So if now if we come in here, and we still are not finding the template index.html. So yeah, we put it off. Uh, move index.html to templates. All right. Let me try it out. So boom, we got it. So we got it here. We can do hello. We can put more stuff here, and that shows up, looking good. Um, now, let's try to put an attack payload in there, right? So now what we can test is what happens if we do, you saw how we kind of used our templating language. What if we do seven times seven right here? And what happens is nothing. I mean, we get hello, OXDF, curly, curly, seven times seven, curly, curly, and 
that's not what that's not an attack right um let's let's take a look here so now we want to look at the other options so render template generally safe render template string uh let's make let's we'll just uh comment this out and we'll do return render template string uh do a string here so we'll do a, like uh, hello comma name there and so now if we think this through what's going to happen is we're going to pass in, in this exact same case we're going to pass in oxdf curly curly seven times seven curly curly that with the f string is going to get put here so it's going to say hello oxdf curly 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 seven times seven curly curly when that gets passed to render template string it's saying hey this whole thing is your template we just put effectively by render template string we've put our user input into the template file and now that's going to get rendered and we're going to get let's see drum roll please <laughs> no app exception what did i do um should i save this where did that really break um, cannot import the item misspell template. Yeah. Tempate. That, was, that really ruined my drum roll, please. That was ready to go here. Uh, drum roll, please, again. There we go. We get OXDF 49. Because what it did was it said, oh, this is a template. So curly curly 7 times 7, I got to evaluate that, and that's 49. Um, and that's how we get execution. You know, if we do um, matrix, uh, SSTI, Python. That's where we can come into here and start to find payloads that like do complicated, J complicated, uh, I don't know why that's hanging, but that's where you can come in and start to see, oh, uh, I can put in a temp, uh, a payload here. That's actually going to get execution. So these types of things where, you know, uh, where's the one I like, I like these, I think right here. No, these are CE anyway, there's, there's a bunch of these in here. Um, but a lot of almost all of them work so you just, just different ways of getting hold of uh, python code that gives you execution within a flax context so um i'm gonna call it here um hopefully this was useful uh let me know if you like this kind of uh, i was trying to make this very beginner friendly um especially well beginner is always a weird word because beginner what but at least uh beginner to hack the box friendly um let me know if this kind of video is useful if i go too fast too slow um, whatever. Let me know you stayed till the end. Not that many people, uh, when you watch YouTube stats, it's incredibly depressing how many few people actually make it to the end. So, uh, if you did, let me know. I'd love to see it, hear it. Um, anyway, thanks for hanging out with me. I will talk to you next time. Bye.